How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Group Mike here. Today we're going to go over my system setup in the Mojo Sling. A lot of you are already familiar with the avionics panel in this plane, but I've actually never gone into detail on how the systems are set up to work together and just how cool the redundancy in this airplane is. So I'm gonna get a little bit technical today, but please pay attention and follow with me. And if you have any questions when watching the video at the end, please leave in the comments. So as you all know, I went with the Garmin avionics in this plane, and this is pretty much what you consider a fully loaded uh, panel. So I've got two dual G3X touch screens, a GTN 650, mainly for instrument, I've got my autopilot here and a G5 for backup. But what about all of these nice colorful buttons all over the screen? That's what I wanna to explain today. So one of the main benefits of building your own plane is that you get to understand some of these technical aspects of your plane better than say if you went and bought a certified airplane. And those things will come in handy in a situation, God forbid, if you're in flight and something fails or something happens, then you're quicker to respond because you generally would know what's going on. So in order to explain my panel, I'm basically gonna go from left to right. And if you see all these nice colorful covers here, they actually serve a purpose. I didn't just put uh, different colors uh, on the panel. I actually used them to label all of the knobs that you see here. So if we start from this here so you see i've got my usb port this plane has a total of six usb ports five amps and they all work great i'm able to charge my phones gopro whatever uh, the case may be and let me put this this is how i generally use this screen by the way so if you start from here you've got your usb ports here and you have two lanes now before i actually explain what the lanes are these are what's connected to your engine. The Rotax 915 itself is a very robust and redundancy system. So this plane has two generators and three batteries. Okay, that's how redundant it is. So two generators, which works with these lanes, A and B. And then you have batteries. So you have one main battery and then you have two backup batteries. But honestly, think of all three batteries as backups because generally speaking when you're when the airplane is operating it's just the generator is working and all the batteries are on standby the only time you need your batteries is when you uh, power up the plane for the first time so your battery help you prime and then boom shoots power to the engine and once the engine is running then your generators take over and so now back to lanes a and b these are what you would call, I guess, mags in your conventional engine. So except this engine doesn't have magnetos, instead it has lanes. And when you think of those generators, think of one to each. So you would have, for example, lane A basically powers up your engine, handles all the stuff with your engine. And then lane B would power up all the electronics in the plane that includes your panel, lights, and all the good stuff in here. So those are the purposes of your lanes. You've got one and two. And you see this warning light here? If I was in flight and this comes on and stays stable, that means that I've lost redundancy. And so I would have to act in that uh, situation. But when this is flashing, it's generally okay. And you have caution here too. So when these lights are flashing, it means things are working as they should but if i had a static light like this in flight that would mean that i need to check that something is up so my one of my generators may have failed or whatever the case may be all right but let's get back to this so i've got two lanes for the engine and then i've got my master switch here your master switch is basically what powers up everything so think of your master switch this is the knob that would connect your battery to power up the engine and so once this is on everything else can come on as well and then you move right next to it we've got our engine start as you all know in building this plane i wanted it to be modern and this is one of the cool features that we added so i don't need a key to start the engines to this plane whenever i have everything set up i just hit this button and my engine will come on and then you move down to the bottom here now you may not be able to see the letters so all of these knobs or all of these switches are actually they're they're labeled by text but 
when I'm sitting up like this, I'm not able to see all of it, right? And that's why I have all this nice colorful covers here. So what this is, if you can see it, it's this is your AMS backup. Think of this as a primer. This is what you, before you start your engine, this primes your battery, okay? And normally you would just hit it and click it up for about five seconds, prime the battery and then turn it back off. So this really serves five seconds for, for the operation of the, the airplane. And once it's off, then you can get on with your checklist and then boot start the engine. So that's what, that's the function of your EMS backup here. Next to it, we've got our prop switch this is basically what powers up your propeller as you all know these or some of you may know that this airplane is powered by an air master prop which is also fully automated has a controller here which we'll get to later and this is what powers up that system and one if this is off like this then i can't start the airplane because the prop would not come on so we've got our prop here and then next to it we've got the fuel pump so this airplane has two fuel pumps. I've got the main fuel pump, which is labeled in green, and then I've got my auxiliary fuel pump, basically my backup, should in case something happens with the main or I just need both on. And generally these work great together. Um, the way you would use them on my startup to take off, I have both of them on. And then once I get in climb or cruise, I will shut down the auxiliary fuel pump and then just run on the main ones. Now, if something should happen in flight, then I would probably have both of them on, but for the most part, these, they've worked seamlessly well together and they've worked great. So these are your fuel pumps. And then moving to the right, we've got your EFIS backup. Remember I mentioned that the airplane has two backup batteries? That's what this EFIS is and really that's for the avionics so the backup batteries i believe gives you about an hour if something were to happen with your generators now imagine like a lot of things has to go wrong for you to get to using your backup because it means one generator failed two generator fails uh main battery fails and then now you run on EFIS. so think of that as the redundancy built in this plane so the EFIS backup is what powers up your your backup battery and generally speaking this is on this is on always because you have to charge those batteries or have them on standby whenever you're operating the aircraft and then next to it we've got our avionics this is what powers up this nice colorful screen that you see here if this was off this entire screen and everything would be off maybe except for the g5 so this is your avionics switch and then i've got my lights basically everything else here are all lights and that's why most of them are labeled in yellow so i've got my beacon light here my nav light those are my those are the nice green red light at the wing tip um i've got my strobes usually you would use this if you're flying you know after sunset or at night or you know it depends on how bright or dark it is outside so i've got my strobe lights taxi light landing light and then pedo so this airplane does not have any anti-icing system right no de-icing except the pedo heat so pedo heat is somewhat of a de-icing system and that would come on if you were you know flying in icy conditions now this plane would never i personally would never fly this plane in anything close to ice and conditions but in that case your pedo heat can help clear out any uh ice that may form around the pedo tube and that way you can still get all your nice uh flight instrument here with your airspeed and so on and so forth so that's what this uh, switch is for and then we move let's move up here i've got my flap switch which is labeled in green and this basically controls my flaps up and down and then you move up you've got your backlight your backlight is what controls the backlight of your screen as you can see here as i'm turning it up and down the the backlight goes brighter or darker and so at night you probably want to have this lower uh, during the day you can leave it as bright and then if we move up this is what controls the propeller so your controller for the propeller starts here uh, you see here it says fine and course this you can manually change the the blade angle of your prop by using this and this is basically your auto switches okay and then next to the 
propeller switch is your G5. So again, talking about that redundancy, this is a backup avionics for me. If I were to lose everything, and I'm saying everything in terms of my avionics or God forbid, also engine power, everything, uh, this comes in handy. The G5 also has its own independent battery that runs for 45 minutes. So if you were to find yourself in trouble during flight and you lose your main avionics, your G5 can help you out. Just make sure you land within 45 minutes and you should be good to go. But generally speaking, when you're flying and everything is on, this also comes on. Below it is the GTN 650. This is a great instrument. Uh, device to fly IFR and I've been playing around with it and as I'm getting more involved in my instrument training this is gonna come in handy and then I've got my autopilot here this is a beautiful system uh, some of the flight videos that I've done you've seen me use this uh, panel here uh, it works great what I generally do is that I make sure I test it while I'm on the ground first and then I would activate it whenever I'm in cruise now, depend on the pilot's preference, every pilot used their autopilot uh, differently, but I like to use my, I engage mine once I get in cruise. Okay, now moving to the right side of the screen, and you're gonna see my hand get blocked some things here. I'll move it to the side. So if you look on the right side, we've got another G3X touch screen. And this is like a secondary display. Everything I have here, I can also have here. And what I generally have the screen on is just traffic. So if I'm on a cross country or even any short flight, I have my uh, basic displays here and then I have this on traffic and I could track whatever I want on it. Um, and I should also mention that the G3X Touch has two comms, which is great for you to be able to, you know, talk to your main radio. And then if I wanted to listen in on COM2, I can listen in on COM2 as well. Um, and then all you, what you see all around here, these are my circuit breakers. Now with the Sling TSI or any experimental, by the way, you can have what's called a VPX system. And that's a more, I would say more streamlined system. I didn't go for it for my own personal reasons, but it's a great option to have. Um, and if I had the VPX, then I wouldn't have all these circuit breakers that you see. And also, if you look closer, all of these are labeled. So all of these switches that you see here, you have their circuit breakers here. So if I, I, I could pull them in and out uh, if something was up. So these are your circuit breakers. Uh, rear cabin light, this is the switch for it. Um, below here, we've got our knobs for the heater. This airplane has an independent heat exchange, which basically you can put the heat on and this is what controls the fan and the amount of heat that you have and then the last thing you'd have at the right end of your panel i've got again another set of usb ports and some circuit breakers but this is something that's important you see it says elt now generally speaking your elt will go off if an airplane is in distress or maybe has a crash landing or any type of crash, your ELT is supposed to go off and that's what will send help to you. Now, the reason why you have this switch here is if you were to say crash land the airplane or something happens and the ELT doesn't go off, well, guess what? You have the option to manually turn it on here to get it off and get you some help. And so that is all of it in a nutshell. This is my panel setup in the Mojo Sling and again, Always good to understand how your systems work together uh, in case you run into any type of situation and you can react faster. Now, I may not have covered some things, but if you have any questions, make sure you leave in the comment below. And if there's something I'm missing that you want me to talk more about or cover uh, on another video, just let me know and I'll be sure to get that on for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And guys, I need those thumbs up because it helps the channel out to get the video spread out on YouTube. So make sure you give this video a like if you did enjoy it, share it. And if this is your first time, be sure to subscribe to Mojo Grip. And guys, also check out my personal channel, Mike Ojo. Check it out and subscribe there. Until next time, I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.